Hey there everybody, it's Wayne D. Welcome to the website, WayneD.com. We're trying to look at interesting things, and uh, this would be one of the most interesting men in golf, Bryson DeChambeau. He's the hottest golfer in the world, just won two in a row. So we've got a swing from 2015 on the right here. Let me play that for you. So Bryson is famous for using what he terms a one-plane swing. He's got clubs that are all the same length and all the same weight until he gets to the driver. I'm not sure about the three-wood, but if you watch the swing, you can see it's pretty darn close to being what he says it is, which is a one-plane swing if all these lines are pretty pretty close to right on top of each other right so that there's about as little discrepancy in plane there as you'll see um, ever with anybody really that should come through so there you go so that's 2015. Uh, I think it was 2016 when he won the USAM and the NCAA. And now let's switch over to this week. Now for all you camera angle geeks, um, these are illustrations and see so you can see the camera move. So I'm not doing measurements here. I'm just giving a general uh, observations. So let's watch. Pretty close right on the plane on the takeaway. When we draw the line down from left arm parallel. Again, really close. And now we're going to see some major differences. So you got to admit that that's a heck of a lot different than this one. So I would argue that he's uh, not swinging on one plane anymore, but he is getting the club right back to the original shaft plane at impact. And for people that think that that's the same thing as the address position, uh, I would like to consider the right arm here and how long it's bent. That's impact there. So that right arm isn't straightening until it gets over there. Anyway, so my opinion here is that he is no longer swinging on one plane. So what has he done that's different from what he did over here? So we saw that uh, most of it was from P3 to P4 where it's different, but I would say also that his setup has gotten different um, as well. Uh, he might have the ball a tiny bit below his feet on the left here, but it's pretty flat and all the other swings are indications that he's got himself a little more out onto the front of his feet uh, here in the effort to really stay on one plane he's got himself more centered to back in his feet a little more a little more toward the heels so we see much less dynamic leg movement on the right and much less posture heading into impact while on the while on the left over here you can see he's creating much much more space for the right arm and look how much more tipped over he is so again these lines they're not measurements they're just illustrations so definitely more bent over 
and somehow it just really looks more more powerful. So why is that backswing changing here when it gets to P3? If you get in a mirror and you put yourself in this position, in order to keep the shaft on the plane, the right forearm has to rotate. So if you don't continue to rotate the forearms a little bit, the club is not going to point in that direction. So my guess here is that he decided that he would incorporate less right forearm rotation and that would change the nature of the wrist angle. So it does put the wrist in a different position, a little flatter. Um, this is a little more neutral. His uh, grip at address, so it's very arched up and weak. The left wrist looks pretty flat at address. So that keeps it a little more like that. If you look at the, the club face, so it's not quite as toe down again on the left. Now the other thing that, that he's doing here is he's increasing the rotation of his upper thoracic leg. So up here he's going to coil that more and he's going to get more stretch. Whereas over here on the left, the right arm is more in front of him, and thus the upper trunk is not as turned. So I guess, my guess is that he figured out that if he could get this position down to the impact that he wanted to, that he did here, which was on the original plane, the original shaft plane, if he could do that with a more powerful backswing, or, or at least generate the possibility for more power. And in the in the meantime, lessen the need to supinate the left arm, left forearm through impact. So when you think about how much forearm rotation is going to be required. with this kind of action here as opposed to this one. I'm thinking that he just kind of figured out that he could take what he was doing and modify it a little bit and make it work better. So let's look at a driver swing from 15 or 16. I guess it was 15 when he won the NCAA, sorry. So let's go with that and then compare it to a driver swing just the other day. Not that one. Not that one. This one. There we go. So again, posture looks a little different, maybe not quite as back in the heels. And again, we're going to see more forearm rotation here so the club does not cross the line. That's got to be, that's pretty close to perfectly on plane at parallel to the ground. And then here we see that club is well on the way to crossing. It's already crossed the line, so it's short and even more to the right than the older swing. And then watch the, the shift of plane here. So if you think of the, uh, the kid from Oklahoma State, whose name eludes me at the moment. We'll see more of this. So again, my, my uh, guess here is that 
uh, he said he had two driver swings, a fairway finder and a crank. My guess is that his fairway finder now has more crank in it because he's got it's got the upper right side coil back more and he's got less forearm rotation and his legs are more dynamically involved here. It's pretty on the other side but I think this is while not as aesthetically pleasing maybe is definitely effective. I also think it's extremely cool how bent his right arm is after impact. If you look at old shots of Hogan you'll see that. Also notice the quietness of the feet. The left heel is just not stuck to the ground. It just doesn't seem to need to move anywhere. And then barely up on the right. Very nice. All right, so I thought it was interesting. Uh, the, certainly his explanation of it would be more interesting than mine, but uh, since we're not talking to him, you can listen to me.